I have a question, Stuart. This is Paul. Yes. Um, regarding connection and uh, the the practice promotes connection and how can we enhance that? And how does it do that? The connection to what? To life, to physical life, to the invisible uh, or spiritual life <clears throat> around us. You know, many years ago, Paul, I recognized that the external world is simply a mirror image of myself. Each and every one of us sees, as I've said many times, we see our own reality. We interact with our own reality as we perceive it, as it reflects exactly what goes on inside each and every one of us. And in order to change that, in order to fix that, in order to, you know, there's, you know, we look out at the world, there's a million things wrong. You know, human beings have to go deep inside themselves and truly develop a system inside that has balance, that has foundation, that has love, you know, that the mind is quiet, uh, a chakra system. And by doing that, it enables them to interact in the world with a very loving, compassionate, you know, non-threatening, and you know, you just function here like a human being, you know, understanding that the reality that you're interacting with is the reality that you perceive, that you yourself perceive. And if you want to constantly look out at the world and see everything negative, <clears throat> the only way to change that is you got to change inside yourself so that you can see that not only, you know, yeah, things are negative, things are, you know, there's a lot of nonsense that goes on in the world. But it doesn't intimidate us. We're detached from it. We're not threatened by it. We learn how to use it as a way to grow instead of as a way to defeat ourselves. You know, and this to me is essential because look, karma, nobody gets free. No soul gets free of interacting with the earth, of being born here until they work out their karma. You work out your karma by how you interact with life. That enables you to work out your karma, you know, and if you work out your karma by being compassionate, being loved, being, you know, you know, being capable of taking the negative that you see in the world and using it inside yourself, you know, and transforming it into an open heart, into love, into, I mean, that's what this meditation is all about, learning how to do that. And instead of thinking that one is going to fix what's not fixable, which is the objective world. I mean, you know, I've said it a lot since Adam and Eve left the Garden of Eden, the objective world has been an insane asylum. So what do we do? Spend our lives complaining about it? Or do we spend our time and energy building an inner life that is strong enough to use whatever we perceive in the world as a reason to grow and develop our spiritual life. Now, some people might think that this is, you know, uh, simplistic, but, it, but it's not really because, I mean, all the negativity is not going to go away until people build a system inside that connects them with spirit. Their hearts are open, there's love inside them, compassion, then the negativity goes away, but you got, I mean, there's 8 billion people and it's not going to go away in our lifetime or maybe a thousand lifetimes down the road. But while it goes on, we can use it as a way to grow inside ourselves. I mean, I know for years, I, I used to run businesses and one of the reasons I ran them, yeah, it was nice to make money and all that. And it certainly made life, you know, well, fairly good. But it was more than that. It was throwing myself in the midst of all of that stuff, all of that craziness that's involved with making money and seeing if I can connect with spirit and use it as a way to grow inside myself instead of being intimidated by it and threatened by it and 
cowering because people steal and you know they're greedy and they're this and that. How can I make this work for me? How can I grow because of what I see in the world? And I would always put myself in those kinds of situations. You know, not because I was so, you know, in love with money, I wasn't. I didn't start even thinking about making a living until I was over 30 years old, you know? But I knew that if I threw myself into life that way, I would be confronted by all of those things that I perceived in life uh, because they were really a reflection of me. And if I changed inside, what I would perceive in the world would start to change. But you can't change unless you truly experience situations. And that's what action is all about. That's what activity is all about. You know? And then using whatever you experience as a way to grow. As a way to get closer to God. As a way to get free of your karma. As a way to change inside. And then the negative is no longer negative. It's just opportunities to grow, opportunities to develop your life, your spiritual life. And you begin to get to a place where there is no longer positive or negative. There's just energy. And it's positive or negative depending upon how we see it. Then it becomes positive and negative, but it's just energy. And I think interacting with the world is essential. I've said it a hundred times, life itself is the temple. Life is sacred. And we are born here to learn how to transform all the suffering and difficulty into a spiritual life. Once we learn how to do that, we don't have to come back here. The calm is finished. But you can't do it unless you interact with the world. I mean, I know in my own life right now, I mean, about uh, five, eight years ago, I swore I would never write another book. I said, this publishing world is like, a, you know, it's a crazy world. And now I have another book and I'm at the point where I have to go interact with the publishing world. And I know what this means for me as a human. It means I have to get over, you know, my pre prejudice is about what the publishing world is all about. And I have to learn how to use whatever it is to grow in my life and not be intimidated by it or threatened by it or, you know, think that, oh my God, these people are just a bunch of greedy. Yeah, it's just life. And I have to learn how to deal with life by interacting with it. And that's a part of my life that has always been really difficult. Writing books are difficult. You know, dealing with the publishing world is five times harder <laughs> than writing a book. And writing a book is not an easy thing to do. I mean, you know, try and write one. It's very difficult. Then you got to cross the bridge into this idiotic commercial world where, you know, literature means nothing and money means everything. Well, I am going to do this for a simple reason. I have to learn how to get free of it. I have to learn to where it doesn't intimidate me any threaten me as a human being. I can deal with that. And if people are greedy, it's not my problem. So I am a firm believer in interacting with life because life is the ultimate teacher and it will show you exactly where you need to grow in yourself. Hiding from it, towering from it, then you know, just prolongs, you know, reincarnation. That's what it does until you finally learn how to do it. <laughs> does anyone else have a question? Thank you. You're welcome. I hope this is clear because this is so much at the core of this meditation that I teach, that Rudy taught, interacting with life. You know, embracing life, learning from life. Recognizing that what you see in the world is a reflection of yourself.
Does anyone else have a question? And look, we all have to learn to like ourselves. And we're never going to like ourselves if we dislike what we see in life. <laughs> it's not possible. Now, I saw a movie, a very powerful movie the other day on Netflix, you know, something about called The Railway Man or something like that. And it was a really powerful movie about a British soldier who was in a, a Japanese concentration camp. And it was very interesting because it's basically what I'm talking about, how they were tortured and uh, inhumanly tortured, these, these soldiers in that camp. And this particular guy, is tortured almost more than everybody. And when the war came to an end and he got released and freed from that place, his whole thing was to go and kill this one Japanese soldier who tortured him. And it was so interesting how he finally goes back to Japan looking for this guy, finds him. And at first he wants to torture him and something in his heart opened where he realized that this revenge this, it has to stop somewhere. It had, and in the midst of this interaction, these two guys became best of friends. Extraordinary, very good movie, a very powerful movie, you know, but a very interesting movie. To see them became, after he went back and this, this interact, they became lifelong friends, these two guys. The suffering, the pain in both of them was so extreme that it brought out compassion and love. And they became friends for the rest of their life. These two guys that were torturing each other. And I think there's an enormous lesson to learn in that kind of reality. What can, what can it teach me? All of the pain, the difficulty in the world. How to have compassion. And how to realize that sometime it has to stop. And it's not going to stop until people learn to forgive each other. I mean, you certainly have that going on in Israel, for God's sake. Every time I read in the media, you know, the, the, the Muslims and the Jewish people killing us. It's not going to stop until people just one day learn to forgive each other and learn how to have compassion instead of, you know, tormenting and torturing each other. And the same thing going on in the Ukraine and Russia. And, you know, <clears throat> it's always about revenge and it's never about compassion and forgiveness. How do we stop the madness? You have it in this country with segregation and black and white and racial things. It's just insane. Instead of we're just all human beings. And all of it will stop if people just learn to forgive each other. Does anyone else have a question? Okay, if there are no more questions, there'll be a meditation on Tuesday. Thank you. God bless you all for being here and being part of my life and giving me an opportunity to grow here. Uh, next Sunday, there won't be a meditation because uh, next weekend there's going to be a retreat. And uh, when I have retreats, I have to, you know, cancel these classes. So there will be class on Tuesday and Thursday and then the following Tuesday. So thank you. Bless you all. Thank you for being in my life. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.